14. Joshua chapter 24 and verse number 14. As I mentioned, you know, last Sunday, we are living in perilous times. Uh, we're living in days of distress. We're living in days of, of struggles. Uh, we're living in days where people are, are battling on every side, every hand. People are battling. We're, people are struggling. Christian people are struggling. Uh, Christian people are facing the oppression of the devil. Christian people are, are facing depression. And if you can name it, it seems like the devil has unloaded and tried his best to discourage and to dishearten the people of God. And friend, if he'll do it to me, he'll do it to you. If he'll do it to you, he'll do it to the church. But I believe that it's last days that we're living in. I don't know how many, I'll just be honest with you, I don't know how many more messages God's going to let me preach before he comes back and gets us. This may be my last opportunity this morning. And I'm praying to God of heaven and help us that we preach every message like it's going to be our last one. Amen? Because it will be one day. One day it's going to be our, one day it's going to be your last church service. One day it's going to be your last opportunity to attend the house of God and come in fellowship and worship with God's people or even get right with God. One day it's going to be your last. Now, friend, I begin to think this week as we are living in the last days, Joshua was, was living his last days. Joshua, at the point of this, uh, at the point of the reading of this scripture, is going to soon pass away. It's his, it is his last uh, speech or his last speaking to the children of Israel before he goes on to be with the Lord. And I see the, I see the intensity of his speech. I see the intensity of his, of his thoughts and of his mind as he is speaking to the children of Israel. Verse number, uh, verse number 14 of chapter number 24 of the book of Joshua now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. His commandment, his, his challenge to the congregation, the children of Israel, was to serve the Lord. And I guess this morning, if I title my message, it will go, it's going to be, what will be your choice? What will be your choice? He said, serve the Lord. A command to serve the Lord. And if it, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose, his, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which are your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now I've had people take offense to that verse. I've heard of people taking offense to that verse, saying that it was just too, uh, it was just too strict. And it was, uh, you know, it, 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 they had the, the mind that Joshua or whoever it was that said that was trying to convince others that they were going to do exactly what they were doing. I'm going to tell you something today. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua had made a choice that day of whom he was going to serve. And he made that choice a long time ago, but reiterating it to the people of God, he said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Joshua was the spiritual leader of his house. And he said, as far as I'm concerned, me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody in your family is going to serve God. But with the best intentions of your life and the best intentions of your heart, you're going to lead that direction. Amen? And the spiritual leader of the home should be the one that declares, as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. I'm going to do everything in my power to, to help my family to serve the Lord, to help my house to serve the Lord. Now, they might not do it, but I'm going to do everything in my power. I'm choosing that my family will serve the Lord, and if they're obedient to God, guess what? They'll serve the Lord. Amen. As for me and my house... We will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, it is uh, he that brought us out up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage that which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people 
through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites which dwelled in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. Their, their answer to what Joshua says, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. But here Joshua, he said something different to them. And Joshua said it to the people. You cannot serve the Lord. You cannot serve the Lord. For he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and, and serve strange God, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he hath done you good. And the people said unto him, Joshua, nay, but we will serve the Lord. Joshua is, is challenging them, said, you can't do it. But I'll tell you something, friend. You cannot serve God in your flesh. Amen. You cannot serve God if you're ser serving other gods. You can't do it. In essence, that's what Joshua's telling them. And they say, nay, Joshua, we're going to serve God. We will serve the Lord. Joshua said unto the people, ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. Now, therefore, put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. Now, friend, Joshua's command is to serve the Lord. Their response was, we will serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. And our children bear witness that we're going to serve God. Now, friend, today let me ask you, how are your children going to be, bear witness to your life? Are they going to look at you and say they were servants of the Most High God? Are, they going to look, are my children, grandchildren, going to grow up and say he was God's man? He was, a, he was a servant of God. God, help us that we live our last days as servants unto the Lord. Uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse number 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. Now, why is it my reasonable service that I serve the Lord? Well, let me think on that just a moment. One day I was lost in sin without God and without hope. One day the whole race of mankind was under the judgment hand of God. They were living under a law that they could not hold up to, a law that they could not perform, a law that they could not, uh, you know, they could not uh, uh, make place for that whole law. And they were living in such a condition. I was living in such a lost condition. But one day Jesus, who came from his home in glory, went to the cross of Calvary. Amen. He hung and, and bled and died there on the cross of Calvary. He who knew no sin became sin for me. And he that, that bore my sin on the cross of Calvary and your sin on the cross of Calvary. That day Jesus became sin for you and me. And friend, ought not I give him all that I have ought not that I give him that I might as a reasonable service to God that I might serve him the Bible says it's a reasonable service to serve the Lord yet many don't serve God many don't serve God I've been burdened here as of late that I might spend more time with God, that I might spend more time in His presence, that I might spend more time with, with the fellowship with Him. Why? Because to serve God is my reasonable service. To fellowship with God is my privilege. Amen. To fellowship with God and to, and to talk with Him and to walk with Him is my opportunity and the privilege that God has given me. And it is my right that I do that. God help us that we would choose who we're going to walk with, who we're going to fellowship with, and we're going to spend time with God. Now, if you're here this morning and you're lost to that God, you don't understand this. Well, I'll tell you how to understand it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Let's look at this thought of serving the Lord and, and making their choice today. Jonathan Edwards' dying charge to his family was this. Trust in God and you have nothing to fear. Boy, isn't that good? Trust in God and you have nothing to fear. Samuel Johnson uh, said to his physician, Doctor, believe a dying man. Nothing but salvation by Christ can comfort you when you come to lie here. Or a departing president like Jackson saying religion is a great reality. The Bible is true. These men on their deathbed declared the right things of God. Declared the message of God. Listen, friend, this is real. 
I'm not preaching to you something this morning that's a fairy tale that's been made up. Amen. Serving God is real, and serving God is a real privilege, and serving God is a real opportunity. Choose you this day whom you will whom you will serve. Now let's look at a couple of things. First of all, let's look at our choice. What should our choice be? Well, it should be a divine choice. It should be a choice to serve the Lord our God. Who are you serving today? What are you serving today? Are you serving God or are you serving mammon? Are you serving the Lord or are you serving the world? Are you wanting to be closer to God or are you wanting to be closer to the things of the world? Do you love the Lord or do you love the pleasures of life? Do you love the pleasures of life more than you do the pleasures of God? Had you rather be out doing anything else but in the house of God? Today, then, friend, you need to move up closer to God. Had you rather do something else than spend time with God, then you need to move closer to God. Had you rather, had you rather do be uh, doing anything at home and you know and, and not spending any time with God? Had you rather be spending it in front of the TV, Amen, or in the presence of God? Had you be rather? And I'm not saying you don't ever do those things, but I'm telling you what your preference today. Had you, had you rather be spending it on Facebook or in the presence of God? Oh, I'll tell you, my friend, it is time, if God's people are ever going to do anything for the Lord, it's time we choose who we're going to serve. I've been a little bit of stress this morning, and, and I've, I've, I've faced a little difficulty because the devil does not want me to tell you from the Word of God what the Word of God says about serving the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve. There'll be many people that leave this morning and say, I'm going to go living just like I've been living. Everything's going fine. Well, everything's going fine for you if you're close to God as you've ever been. Everything's all right with you if you can't get any closer to the Lord. But I want to tell you something, friend. I've got to get closer to God. I've got to get closer to Him and get in better fellowship with Him. I need to move up. Amen. Choose you this day whom you will serve. You know why people get along and say, well, I'm doing good and nothing's bothering me and I'm not having any trouble, uh, you know, trouble serving the Lord? Most of the time, a lot of people like that are where the devil wants them. You ain't causing nobody no grief. You ain't causing the devil no problems because you're not witnessing for him. You're not saying anything for him and you're not trying to live for him. The devil ain't going to bother you. Amen? Now, the devil bothers me when I start reading the Bible, choose you this day whom you will serve. The devil bothers me when I start reading the Word of God. You know why? Because I pick up the Bible to read it and things I ain't thought of in years will pop in my mind. Amen. When I get down on my face to pray, I begin to pray and talk out to God and guess what? Here comes the devil fighting my prayer life. Don't want me to pray. Give me other things to do rather than call on God. The Bible says choose you this day who you will serve. The devil's always going to fight you when you serve God. He's always going to try to distract you when you serve the Lord. But choose you this day whom you will serve. Your act of the choice that you're going to make, it should be to serve the Lord. And it should be that we choose to serve him because of who he is. Not because just the Bible says to serve him, which we do and we, we want to do but in honor of the word of God and obedience to that. But friend, look who you've got the opportunity to serve. Look at the choice you've got to make. You've got a world of sin. You've got a world of sorrow. You've got a world of suffering. You've got a world of pleasure and sin for a season. Or you've got God in heaven who, who, who gave his son to die for you on the cross of Calvary. And if you're saved, that God of heaven's where you're going to spend eternity. This world is going to pass away and it's going to be gone. The fleshly things of the world are going to be gone. But choose you this day whom you will serve. Will you serve that God in heaven that loves you and gave his life for you and all he wants you to do is to serve him or will you choose to serve the world it's a choice we make choices every day the thing about it is most people don't want to make that choice to serve God it's hard friend it's, 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 it's hard if we try to do it in the flesh you can't do it Joshua says you can't do it except you have the power of God except you are close to God you cannot serve him you must serve the Lord and make it your choice. And then our choice should be this. And our act of choice, it should be number one, it should be totally. 
Lord, I'm sailing out. God, I, I'm sailing out. I, I, want, I want to serve you totally. You say, but preacher, I've got other things I've got to do. I've got to provide for my family. You know, nobody said you had to quit all that. Amen, you can't. You've got it. The Bible says you provide for your family. But while you're providing for your family, you give your heart to the Lord and say, Lord, help me to be what you want me to be this day. God, help me to serve you this day. God, help this day that I serve you while I'm working, while I'm cleaning the house, while I'm doing whatever I'm doing. God, help me to serve you today. Well, preacher, I don't ever get to go nowhere. I'm at home all the time. Serve you the Lord. Amen. Well, how can I do it? Well, you can get down first of all. You can get out and pray. Amen. Pray for your church. Pray for your preacher. Pray for those that's on this prayer list. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Make it your choice <coughs> to serve him totally. And make it your choice to serve him evidently. What does that mean, preacher? It means that it's evident in your life that you're a Christian. God help us to be that way. Now, some people are not going to believe it no matter what you do. There are some people that will find fault with everything you do, everything you say, no matter what you do. I've had people tell me about other, you know, other Christians, how, you know, they're not, but, but I know the people's life, and they're doing the best they can to serve the Lord, and somebody's always going to find fault. But to the best of your ability, amen, I believe that we ought to be evident in our life that we're servants of God. Choose you this day. Are you going to make your choice? What is your choice going to be? Choose you this day whom you will serve. And then the time of our choice should be today. The time of our choice to serve the Lord. We shouldn't say, well, I, I'll wait a year or two or I'll wait a week or two. I've got some things I want to do before I commit my life to serving God. Let me tell you something. You might have something to do. Or you listen, you might declare today, I, I, I'll wait next week. I've got, some, I've got some things I'm going to do next week that I can't really serve the Lord doing. Oh, no, preacher's going to go to meddling. I've got some worldly things that I planned on doing before he preached this message. And after I get through doing those worldly things and going to those worldly places and partaking of those worldly, uh, worldly sins, uh, then I'll serve the Lord. The Bible said, choose you this day whom you will serve. You might walk out of here and never have another opportunity to say, Lord, I want to serve you. God, I want to serve you. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Right now, the time of action to serve the Lord is today. It ain't tomorrow. It's not next week. It's not later on in your lifetime. Today is the day to serve the Lord. Today is the day of salvation. If you're here and you're lost without God, you need to get saved today. Today. We have no promise of tomorrow, church. Listen, what if we go out of here this morning and say, well, next week I'll begin to serve the Lord. Listen, what if the rapture takes place before I get through preaching? What if the rapture takes place before we get back tonight or next week or whenever? What if Jesus comes back? He ain't going to come back, preacher. In the day that people don't think he's coming, amen, he's coming back. Amen, he's coming. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. I think about it like this sometimes. If I treated my job the way some people treat church and serving the Lord, I'd get fired in about two days. I wouldn't make it long if I served, if I served at work like I served God sometimes. I wouldn't make it long. We've got to choose today whom we will serve and make it our choice. Why today, preacher? Well, listen, I believe the Lord's dealing here this morning. I've asked him to, and I believe God's dealing this morning. And I believe, I believe that the devil didn't want me to preach this at all. And I believe that with all my heart that God wants to help you. And you say, well, I'll do it later on. Today is the day that you determine in your heart that you're going to serve the Lord. Is because today is the day the Holy Spirit of God's dealing with you to serve him. Amen? If God's not dealing with you to serve the Lord, I pray right now, God, deal with us to serve the Lord. God's the Spirit of God. There may be so much sin in your life that you, that you can't serve God. Amen. You, must be, you may be so full of wickedness that you cannot serve God. And until you get through and get rid of that life of sin, until you get that sin out of your life, you can't serve God. Amen. You cannot. I can't serve God with sin in my life. Like I can't get up here and preach with sin in my life. And I beg God for forgiveness. I beg Him for cleansing. I beg Him that He'll help me because I know in order to serve God, I've got to be clean. Joshua told them you cannot serve God with all the other gods in your life. 
life. Friend, today you can't serve God with all the other gods in your life, all the other things that's more important than God. You cannot serve God. But if you'll get rid of that, the happiest day of your life will be when you get rid of worldliness and get rid of fleshliness and get rid of sin and say, I'm going to serve God. But preacher, I can't do it. No, you can't. But the Spirit of God will help you, and you will. Amen. But you got to clean it. You got to clean out the closet. You got to clean sin out of your life. You got to get up, give up those things that are taking time, that are taking things away from, between you and God, and that are coming between you and God. You got to get rid of sin. If you get rid of sin, you can be God's servant. Amen. Choose you this day whom you will serve because today is the day the Holy Spirit of God may be dealing with you. If you're here lost, choose you today to call on Jesus as your Savior because you may not have another chance to. If the Spirit of God's dealing with you today, friend, it's a terrible thing to turn away the Spirit of God. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Let me tell you this. If you choose today, if you make your choice that you're not going to serve God, I wait, preacher. I'll tell you what's going to happen. The next time it's going to become harder to make that choice. You'll get, you'll get, you'll get more out in sin until you'll finally have to hit the bottom before you once again see, oh, if I had not done this, if I had not done that, if I had not got out in sin, then I wouldn't be where I'm at today. That's exactly right. If the prodigal son hadn't got out into sin, he'd have never been where he was at feeding the pigs. But what will happen, friend, the farther you get into sin, the worse you'll get and the harder it is to get back to God. I know pre people that's been out of church for years used to be faithful to the house of God, used to be faithful to prayer meeting, whatever was going on. And guess what? They got to getting out a little bit at a time. And now they're out of church. And I can't bring them back in. I've tried. I've begged them to come to the house of God. No, I just, I'm all right. Everything's okay. Boy, I'd hate to go out to meet God that way, wouldn't you? Everybody is on the verge of being that way if we don't stay close to the Lord. Everyone is in ver on the verge of uh, being backslidden if we don't stay close to God and choose you this day whom you will serve. Who are you going to serve? Now, why, why should it make any difference what choice that you make? Well, I'll tell you something. Your spiritual well-being, your spiritual joy, your spiritual happiness depends on whether or not you're going to serve God. Amen. I'm happiest when I'm closest to the Lord. I'm the most, amen, did you say amen, sweetheart? Amen. I'm the most miserable when there's sin in my life. Amen. I preach, it don't bother me. You need to get right with God. You need to get born again. If sin don't bother you, you need to get saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus. That's, all, that's your only hope. If you can sin and live in sin and it don't bother you, you need to get saved. You need to get born again. But if you live in sin and the Holy Spirit of God deals with you and you know what you're doing is wrong and you don't get it out of there and don't get it right with God, then you'll continue to live in misery and you're at a dead end until you get rid of those things and make up who you're in your heart and mind. Lord, today I'm going to serve you and I'm going to do whatever it is necessary to serve you. And Lord, I want to be thy servant. I'm going to make a choice to serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve. And I'm about finished. And y'all are glad, I'm sure. But I'm about finished. Listen, who are you going to serve? Who are you going to serve today? You're going to serve God or are you going to serve the world? Charles Spurgeon, I believe he had it said and he said it best. He called people that were, and I read after him some, he called people that were trying to serve the Lord and trying to serve the world at the same time trying to live in sin and trying to live a spiritual life he had a term he had a name for those now we've got all kinds of names there you know there was Pharisees and Sadducees and there's you know there's all kinds of, of uh, those that end with us but he said I'm going to call them people that want to serve the world and them that want to serve God and them that want to live just in the middle so they can, you know, they want to have 
They want to have a little bit of worldliness about them, a little bit of living in the world, a little bit of living in sin because that brings them the pleasure of the flesh. But they want to live a, a little bit over here in church because that makes them feel good about themselves. And you can't straddle that pen. You got to serve God or you got to serve the world. You got to do one. You know why? Because you try both and you're miserable. Charles Burton said they're between that. They're between eyes. They are between eyes. They don't know what they want to do. But yet they know what they ought to do. Between eyes. He said this, I can see where you are, you between eyes. The saints will be ashamed of you because you did not join with Christ in the day of battle. And the adversary, the devil himself, will despise you because you shrank away even from him. Be one thing or the, or the other. Don't be a between act. I like that. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Are you going to serve the Lord? Or are you going to serve the world? Get off the fence. Make your choice. Make your choice. Listen, if I wasn't going to serve God, I'd just be in the world. I'd just go ahead and serve the world. I, I wouldn't live on that middle fence. No place for that middle fence. Because you're not doing any good. Have you ever tried, have you ever sat across anybody ever here besides me ever sat on a rail fence? I ain't never sat on a barbed wire fence. That hurts. <laughs> but you know what's happening when you're sitting on a rail fence? You're sitting on a rail fence. If you ain't got no help to get down from there, you're stuck on that rail fence. You sit on that rail fence. You can't do one thing but sit there. What else you going to do? You can't run. You can't walk. You sit on that rail fence, and you're just sitting on that rail fence. You ain't helping nobody do nothing. On one side of that rail fence is somebody that needs their hay put up. And listen, I've pitched hay with a pitchfork on a, white, on a sled, on a wooden sled, and I've hauled that hay down through the field, and I've helped stack it on. I've climbed on top of that haystack, and I've stacked hay with a pitchfork. So I know what it is to stack hay. So don't, you know, don't look at me like that preacher don't know nothing about life. I know a whole lot about country living. Amen. I grew up that way. Don't, hey, I know what it is, brother, to get on the top of the top tiers of a backer barn and, and hang that. And I know what it is to get on the bottom. I'd rather be on the top. Amen. I don't like eating all that stuff. Let me tell you something, friend, on that fence. You straddling that fence, somebody over here needs some help doing something, and you, and, you, and you say, well, I'll go over here and help them put up that hay. Today we don't do that. We bail it and roll it up and use forklift, and I know all that stuff, and that's fine and well. But listen, on the other side, well, there's a fishing pond down there. I see it. I saw I believe I saw bass jumping. I'd rather go. They need help real bad, and I really ought to be doing that over there, but I'm going to fish it instead. Now, I've done that. I've done that. I've seen things that needed to be doing inside. You know what I you know what was all the time when I was doing something that I knew I should have been doing something else? I was miserable. Well, I enjoy that fish trip. It was good. Amen. Some of y'all looking at me like, please shut up, preacher. I want to go home. When God gets through, I will. We're going to have Lord's Supper here in just a minute. Just give you something to think about. Are you going to serve the Lord? Our, their Lord's Supper is a commitment that we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. We're going to remember what he did for us on the cross of Calvary. And when we partake of that Lord's Supper, it ought to be in our heart, God, because of what you did for me on the cross of Calvary. Because of your shed blood, because of your broken body, I'm going to choose to serve you. Choose this, you this day whom you will serve. Who are you going to serve today? You're going to serve God? You're going to make up, make up your mind. Make up your mind today who you're going to serve. Preacher, I won't come back and listen to that no more. Well, you got a good dose this morning. Amen. Choose you this day whom you were serving. I'm not mad at you. I'm just preaching what God laid on my heart. Choose you this day whom you were served. I get so mad at me sometimes. I get so aggravated at me sometimes that I can't breathe hardly. I walk around kicking myself. You know better than to do stuff like that. You know better than to think things like that. What's the matter with you? By the help of God, I'm going to serve him. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Every head bowed, no one looking around, just for a moment.
I'm feeling much better now. Thank you. Appreciate your prayers. What's going to be your choice today? Now, first of all, let me ask you if there's someone lost here today that don't know God. How about slip your hand up and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm lost and I don't know God. Will you slip your hand up and I'll pray for you? There again, I won't embarrass you, but I'll pray for you. Preacher, I get saved, but I got too much, I got too many other things that I want to do before I listen. You may not have tomorrow. Boast not thyself for tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Is there one here? Say, preacher, pray for me. I'm lost. God bless you. Is there another? Raise your hand. Preacher, I'm lost. God bless you. Is there another one? Oh, my friend today, what? Let me ask you, what, what causes you not to get saved? Is anything worth going to hell over? Is anything worth spending eternity in hell over? Is there one thing on this earth that you'd rather do than, than go to hell than to give your heart and life to Jesus and go to heaven when you leave this world? Is there any? Is there anything? I can't think of a thing that's worth dying and going to hell over. If it's mom, dad, if it's brother, sister, if it's the pleasures of the world, that lies for only a season, and then you'll die and go to hell without God. Is there anything worth going to hell over? Now I wonder if there's a believer this morning say, Preacher, I've been touched with the message and I want to serve.